Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Bram and welcome to another Flutter tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you guys how to use the drawer widgets. Now, if you're uncertain about what a drawer widget is, then let's take a look at the preview application that we'll be building. So this is a drawer. I can dismiss it or close it by tapping outside of it or clicking on this cancel button. And I can open it back up by tapping on this hamburger menu or simply by swiping from left to right. Now we'll also be simulating some sort of switching account functionality because like you can see over here, we got two profile pictures representing two accounts. And whenever I tap on the smaller profile picture, we switch accounts or we switch the profile picture, trying to simulate account switching. All right, so without further ado, let's create a new Flutter project and jump into the code. All right, so I went ahead and I created a new Flutter project. And like you can see in my main.dart file, I've already written down some code. Um, so I got a material package import here. And I got my main method. And in my run app function call, I pass in a new material app and the home property for that material app is null because of course we have not created any pages yet. So let's do that right now. So let's create a new folder in our library folder and let's call that pages. And in that folder, let's create a new file and let's call it home underscore page dot dart. And this file is going to contain all of the code for our home page. Let's import the material package and let's create a new stateful widget. And the stateful widget is going to be called home page. Let's now in our build method return a new scaffold instead of a container. So new scaffold, scaffold. And in here, let's set the app bar property to a new app bar. This app bar is going to have a title, which is going to be a new text. And this is just going to say something like my drawer app. Our scaffold is also going to have a body. So let's set the body property to a new center. And this new center is going to have a child, which is going to be a new text. And this text is going to say something like homepage. Let's save this and let's go back to our main.dart file. Let's import our newly created page. Import pages homepage.dart. And in our home property for our material app, let's now set this to a new homepage. Save this and let's now run our application. Okay, so nothing too spectacular here, but before we are going to create our drawer, let's actually try to make this app look a little bit nicer. So let's go back to our homepage of the art file, the app bar, let's set the background color to colors.redaccent, and let's make the text um, in our center a little bit bigger. So style, new text style, whoops, new text style, and let's set the font size to something like 35.0. Let's save this and let's take a look at our application. All right, and that looks way better already. Let's now start creating our drawer. So our scaffold actually also has another property, which is called drawer. And this takes a new drawer. Drawer has a property called child. And in here, let's pass in a new list view. If you now save this file and go back to your device, then you should see a hamburger icon appear in the app bar. If I now press on this hamburger icon, then I should see a drawer appear. Now, of course, this drawer is empty because we have an empty list view as a child of our drawer. So let's now try to populate that. To populate our list view, let's use the children property. And in here, let's create a new list style, which has some properties. One of those is title. Let's create a new text in here, saying something like first page. List style also has another property called trailing, which takes a widget. And we're just going to pass a new icon here. And let's use icons dot arrow underscore upward. Let's save this and let's take a look at our application. So like you can see, our list style widget automatically applies some padding around our title and our trailing. So let's create three more, one for the second page. Let's call this second page and let's create a new icon here, which is going to be arrow right. And let's create one more for the close button. Let's call this close. And the icon that we'll be using is called cancel. Save this. And now you should be seeing a nice list view with some tiles. So that is looking nice already. But one more thing that I would like to add is a divider between the second page list style and the close list style because those two are kind of disconnected, right? So in between these, let's create a new divider. And like the name suggests, that is going to add a divider between those two. Let's take a look at our application. All right, so like you can see or cannot see, a faint thin line is added between the second page list style and the close list style. 
It's really thin, it's really faint, but it should be better visible on a real device and it should look quite nice. So let's now try to implement the header for our, for our drawer. So the header should be at the top of our list view. So let's go back to our list view and in the children property list, let's add a new user account drawer header. This widget has a few required properties for you to fill in. First of which is going to be account name. This is going to take a widget and for me this is going to be um, a text widget saying Bram Van Bilsen. But of course feel free to fill in every, um, whatever string you would like. And the other required property is called account email. This is also going to take a new text widget and for me this is going to be Bram V Bilsen at gmail.com. Let's save this and let's take a look at our application. So this is looking nice already, but I would actually like to change the blue background with an actual image. So to do that, let's go back to our user accounts drawer header. And this widget has another property called decoration. In here, let's pass in a new box decoration. This has a property called image, which takes a new image decoration or decoration image, rather decoration image, which has a property called image. And in here, let's pass in a new network image. And a network image takes a URL, which is going to be a string to our to the website with our image on. So I already got one copied and pasted. So let's paste that in here. Let's save this. And let's take a look at our application. So like you can see, there's a problem here because our image actually does not fit our drawer header. So to fix that, let's go back to our box decoration, decoration image. And this has a property called fit. And in here, let's say box fit dot fill. Let's save this and let's go back to our application. And this looks way better already. Let's now try to add the profile picture in our drawer header. To do that, let's go back to our drawer header widget. And this has another property called current account picture, which is going to take a widget. We're going to pass in a new get gesture detector. This gesture detector has a property called child in which we are going to add a new circle avatar. This is going to have a background image property, and this is going to be a new network image, which is of course, once again, going to take a URL to the image. And I've already paid, copied my image URL, so let's paste that in here. Let's save this, and let's go back to our application. And with minimal code, we already got a cool looking drawer. Now I know what you're thinking, why did I nest the profile picture in a gesture detector? The reason for that is because the gesture detector has a property called ONTAP and I can use this to print something out whenever someone taps on the, on the profile picture. For example, this is the current user. If I now go back to my application and tap on my profile picture, I should be seeing um, our print statement in the, in the terminal, in the console. Let's now try to add the second profile picture for if you have multiple accounts. To do that, let's go back to our drawer header widget. In here, we have another property that we have not used yet called other accounts pictures. And this takes a list of widgets. Now in here, let's create a new gesture detector, like the same that we did before. So I'm just going to copy paste this and indent this a little nicer. And let me copy my URL for my picture. Let's paste it in here. Let's save this and let's also um, make this print state and say something else like this is the other profile. Save this and let's go back to our application. Like you can see, the second profile picture is also added. I can now click on this and I should see the print statement in my debug console. This is the other profile. Awesome. Now I can also add some more other profile pictures in the other accounts pictures list. So let's try to do that and let's see what that looks like. So I'm just going to copy this and paste one more in here, save this and let's go back to our application. And now you can see that I have multiple other profile pictures. But of course, for this tutorial, we're just going to use one. All right, so pretty much all the styling for this application is done. Let's now try to simulate that switch account feature that I've told you guys about. So to do that, let's first of all make two new variables in our class. Um, both are going to be a string. The first is going to be our main profile picture profile picture it's going to be equal to at the beginning this string so the first url and let's also create another string called other profile picture 
and this is going to be equal to the second string. Let's now fill in those variables instead of using these hard-coded strings. So the first network image is going to be our main profile picture and the second network image is going to be our other profile picture. Let's save this. And now in the application, we should see the exact same thing. Let's now in our class create a new method and this method is going to be called handle or switch user. In here, we are going to call this.setState. And we're going to call this.setState because we are going to change the main profile picture and the other profile picture. And we want to re-render these network images after we did that. So we need to call this.setState. Let's first of all, outside of the setState function, um, create a new string. And this is just going to be a backup string. And it's going to be equal to our main profile picture. Let's now in our this.setState set the main profile picture to the other equal to the other profile picture and let's set the other profile picture equal to our backup string let's now save this let's go um, down to our other accounts picture in our gesture detector let's now switch the sprint statements for our new method that we created so switch users or how did I call it switch user let's save this and let's take a look at our application if I now tap on this profile picture then we should see the two profile pictures change so let's try that and that works awesome our switch user functionality is now implemented let's now try to implement the functionality for these three list styles so these two are going to navigate to another page and this close list style or button is going to close our drawer so let's first try to implement this functionality. And after that, let's worry about navigating to other pages. So let's go to our closed list style. And list style also has another property called on tap. And in here, let's create a function, an arrow function. And let's type navigator.off.context.pop. And this will pop or dismiss or close our drawer. Let's save this. And let's go back to our application. And let's now test this. And that works. Awesome. So let's now add another page to navigate to whenever we click on this first page and second page button. So in our pages folder, let's create a new file. Let's call this other underscore page, page dot darts. In here, let's import our material package. And this page is going to be a stateless widget called other page. Let's save this. And let's first of all create a new variable, which is going to be final because we're in a stateless widget. It's going to be a string and let's call this page text and let's initialize it or let's assign it in our constructor. So our page, this page text, let's save this. Let's now in our build method, return a new scaffold. The scaffold is going to have an app bar. So let's create a new app bar. The title of which is going to be a new text displaying our page text. Whoops, page text. And we also have we're also going to have a body here, which is just going to be a new center, which has a child, and this child is just going to be a new text as well, which displays our page text string. Let's save this and let's go to our home page, the dart file, and let's import our new newly created page. So imports other underscore page dot darts. So let's now scroll down to our list styles and in our first list style, in our first page, first page list style, I'm sorry, let's use the untap property. And in here, let's navigate. So navigator dot off context dot push. And we're going to be pushing a new material page route. And this is going to have a builder. So build context context and let's build a new other page saying first page let's now copy this property so copy the on tap property and let's paste it in our second list style as well and let's change this argument to second page let's now save this and let's take a look at our application 
So if I now press on this first page list style, then I should be navigating to our other page, which is going to say first page. So let's try that. And that works. And because we're using a scaffold with an app bar, we're actually seeing this back button automatically, which is going to navigate us back to our previous page. So let's do that. Let's now test our second page list style. And that works as well. Now, one thing that I'm seeing is that whenever I navigate to another page, this app drawer, this drawer, I'm sorry, actually stays open. And this might be a functional that you do want or do not want. So let's now take a look at how we should actually close it whenever we navigate to another page. Adding this functionality is actually really easy because we already know how to close a drawer because we've already done it in here. Now let's go to our first list style and let's copy this navigator. In here, let's remove this arrow and let's just use a regular function. Let's now type navigator dot off context dot pop and that should close our app drawer. Now we can just paste our navigator in here again and that should work. Let's now copy this on tap property and paste it in our second list style as well. Whoops, let's indent this properly. Let's change this to second page again. Let's save this and let's now take a look at our application again. So if I now tap on the first page or second page list style, then the drawer should close and we should navigate to another page. So let's try that. Let's go back to see if the drawer actually closed. And that works. Awesome, let's now test it for the second, um, for the second list style. And that works as well. Awesome. All right, so that was everything for our tutorial for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, feel free to leave a like. Also, if you want me to cover another specific Flutter topic, feel free to ask me down in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply to you guys. That was it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one.